right, so what we're going to do in this video is add an h to trig functions. Yes, instead of talking about sine, cosine, secant, cosecant, and so on, we'll talk about sine, cos, sex, mm, that sounds weird, and cosex, and so on. These are the hyperbolic functions. All right, so let me start with an interesting fact about functions. So suppose that I have an arbitrary function f of x, which is defined over the real line. Then the claim is that I can always rewrite it as a sum of an even and an odd function. So how can I do that? Well, let me write it down and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to rewrite my function as follows. So f of x plus f of minus x over 2 plus f of x minus f of minus x over 2. Now we see that I've just rewritten the same thing because the term f of minus x over 2 cancels with the minus f of minus x over 2 and the two other terms can just add up to f of x so I get the same thing as the left hand side. But the key point here is that the first expression here is now an even function because if I send x to minus x I get the exact same expression while the second one is an odd function because if I send x to minus x then I get the same expression with an overall minus sign. So what I've done here is uh, I've rewritten the function f of x for any function f of x as a sum of an even and an odd function. All right, this is pretty cool. Now let's apply that to our favorite function, the exponential. So if I take e to the x and use this process here, I'll get first an even function, which is the even part of the exponential, and an odd function. And these two expressions turned out to be very uh, important and very useful and they appear in a lot of places so they're given their own name. This one is called the hyperbolic cosine function and is denoted by cos of x so h here stands for hyperbolic cosine and this expression here is called the hyperbolic sine functions uh, and these are examples of hyperbolic functions which is what we will study in this video. So what do these hyperbolic functions look like? Well, it's easy to sketch their graphs because we know the graph of the exponential. So if we start with a hyperbolic sign, which is the odd part of the exponential, its graph looks like this, which is indeed the graph of an odd function. And if we look at the hyperbolic cosine, which should be the even part of the exponential, its graph looks like this, which is the graph of an even function. So in analogy with trig functions, we can also define four other hyperbolic functions. So the first two we would define is the hyperbolic tan and hyperbolic cotan function. So the hyperbolic tan is defined as the hyperbolic sine over the hyperbolic cosine, just as for trig functions. The expression in terms of exponential is this one, and this is the graph of the function. So we see that it actually has two horizontal asymptotes at y equals to 1 and minus 1. The hyperbolic cotan is defined as hyperbolic cos over hyperbolic sine. This is the expression for it in terms of exponentials and the graph and it also has two horizontal asymptotes at y equals 1 and y equals to minus 1 so it should go through 1 and minus 1 here and we can also define hyperbolic secant and hyperbolic cosecant functions so hyperbolic secant is 1 over hyperbolic cos this is the expression in terms of exponential and this is the graph which has a horizontal asymptote at y equals to 0 while hyperbolic cosecant is 1 over hyperbolic sine, this is the expression in terms of exponential. This one has a vertical asymptote at x equals to 0 and also horizontal asymptote at y equals to 0. All right, so what do we want to do when we discover new functions? We want to find their derivatives. Okay, so let me start by calculating the derivative of the hyperbolic sine function. So what is this? So in this case, it's not too hard to calculate because we can use a definition in terms of exponentials. And we already know what the derivative of the exponential function is. All right, so I can pull the one half out, and now I have derivative of exponential, that's e to the x. For the second term, I have minus the derivative of e to the minus x, so I have to use the chain rule. What I'll get is e to the minus x times minus one. So in other words, I end up with one half e to the x plus e to the minus x. And if you look back at the definition of the hyperbolic functions, this is the hyperbolic cosine function. So in other words, the derivative of the hyperbolic sine function is exactly equal to the hyperbolic cosine function. 
you can do very similar calculations for all other five hyperbolic functions, and this is what you get. So the derivative of hyperbolic sine is hyperbolic cosine, derivative of hyperbolic cosine is hyperbolic sine, derivative of hyperbolic tan is hyperbolic secant square, derivative of hyperbolic cotan is minus hyperbolic cosecant square, and derivative of hyperbolic secant is minus hyperbolic secant hyperbolic tan, while the derivative of hyperbolic cosecant is minus hyperbolic cosecant hyperbolic cotan. So what you see here is that these are very, very similar looking to the formula that we had for trig functions. However, they are slightly different. The signs are different. So the first three here have positive signs. These three have negative signs. These are different from the signs that you get for derivatives of trig functions. So that's very, very important. You don't make a mistake with the signs when you deal with hyperbolic functions. Another thing that's very cool with hyperbolic functions is that they satisfy all kinds of uh, hyperbolic identities, just like trig functions satisfy trig identities. So here's a few that are uh, very useful. Well, the first two here are just saying that hyperbolic sine is, is odd function and hyperbolic cosine, cosine is an even function, which is, of course, true by definition. These three here are the analog of the uh, famous identity sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1 for trig functions. But we see that they're slightly different. The signs, again, are different. So instead of being sine square plus cos square is equal to 1, you get hyperbolic cosecant square minus hyperbolic sine square, which is equal to 1. And you also have more identities. I've shown uh, two of them here. There's like uh, addition of angle formula, just like you get for trig functions. But again, they are different from the identities you have in trig for trig functions. The signs are different, so it's important you don't make a sign mistake. So you can prove all of these identities by replacing the hyperbolic functions by their definitions in terms of exponentials and then manipulating exponentials to prove the identity. So as an example, let me prove uh, perhaps the most important identity, which is that the hyperbolic cos cosine square minus hyperbolic sine square is equal to 1. So I'm going to start by rewriting the left-hand side here in terms of exponentials and then manipulate them to show that I get precisely 1. So hyperbolic cosine is e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2 square minus hyperbolic sine, which is e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2 square. Now I can expand the squares. So what I'm going to get is e to the 2x plus 2 plus e to the minus 2x over 4 minus, then I get e to the 2x minus 2 plus e to the minus 2x over 4. All right, if I just manipulate that a little bit, what do I get? Well, I get e to the 2x minus e to the minus, sorry, minus e to the 2x, first terms of both expressions, then plus 2 minus minus 2, and then the last one is plus e to the minus 2x minus e to the minus 2x. Now you see what happens. These two cancel, these two cancel, I get 2 plus 2, so I get 4 over 4, which is precisely equal to 1. So that proves this identity. And you can do very similar calculation to prove all of the other identities that I showed on the previous slide. All right, so let me end this video by explaining why we call these functions hyperbolic. But let me start with trig functions. So for any t, if you look at the point with coordinates cos of t and sine of t, then you know where it's going to lie in the plane. It will lie on the unit circle, so the circle of radius 1. So in other words, any point on the circle here can be uh, has coordinates that can be written as sine, cos of t and sine of t for some angle t. So why is that true? Well, the unit circle has equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, and if you pick a point with these coordinates here, cos of t and sine of t, you know that cos squared of t plus sine squared of t is also equal to 1, so in other words, that implies that the point must lie on the unit circle. All right, now what about hyperbolic functions? So for any t, if I look at the point with coordinates hyperbolic cosine of t and hyperbolic sine of t, then where does it lie on the plane? Well, it turns out that it will lie on the right branch, so on this part here of something here that probably is familiar. This is a hyperbola. Now, this is not an arbitrary hyperbola. This is, in fact, a hyperbola with equation x squared minus y squared equals to 1. And why is it true that a point with coordinates uh, cos of t and sine of t 
uh, lies on this hyperbola? Well, it follows because these hyperbolic functions satisfy the identity that hyperbolic cosine square minus hyperbolic sine square t is equal to. All right, so, and the fact that it lies only on the right branch here is just because the hyperbolic cosine is always positive. So this is why these functions are called hyperbolic functions, because they parametrize hyperbolas, just like trig functions parametrize circles.